Hello and welcome to Digital Marketing Musings, hosted by Merkel. Each episode, we choose a different expert to discuss the latest and greatest in digital marketing. Today, we're interviewing Sarah Caldwell about email marketing fundamentals. All right, let's get to it. I'm Gaia Reed, And I'm Andrew McCartney. And this is Digital Marketing Musings. Welcome back to Digital Marketing Musings, Season 2. Today, we're joined by Sarah Caldwell to talk about email marketing fundamentals and what all digital marketers should know about this channel. Sarah is a senior relationship marketing strategist at DEG Digital, a Merkle company. She has over 10 years of experience in omni-channel marketing and works with a diverse group of brands to craft custom and personalized strategic solutions to drive positive growth. Welcome to our show, Sarah. Thank you. Excited to be here and talk about email marketing as an email marketing nerd. (laughs) So Sarah, to start off with, can you just give us like a broad strokes, high level understanding of what email marketing is through your eyes and how it differs from other channels? Yeah. So email is the currency of the web. Um, And anyone who's online has an active email address, which is why email marketing is such a great outreach and marketing channel. Um, Why email is crucial, is a crucial digital channel in my opinion, is the cost. It's significantly lower in cost uh, when it comes to sending a single email um, compared to let's say digital ads, social ads, or direct marketing. The cost of sending a single email is typically less than a 10th of a cent Um, And because of this low cost, that means the ROI of emails is higher than other digital channels when you factor in spend. So when someone signs up for your email program, that means they're interested in hearing more about uh, more from you and expect you to reach out to them, let's say versus Facebook ads, where a quick search or mentioning a brand out loud will suddenly lead to seeing the same ads just about everywhere on your social media accounts. So what are the types of things that are important to managing an email program? Yeah. So in terms of managing, I would say following compliance regulations and making sure you are targeting users who are explicitly opted into your email program. Don't auto opt purchasers into your emails or buy lists. This can spiral out of control really quickly. That is so hard to recover from um, and create a negative brand experience as well. And what makes up a successful email marketing program is segmentation and personalization. It's easier said than done for many because it's so easy to think (laughs) that batching and blasting, which is a pet peeve word of mine, will lead to a high return, but it's actually the opposite. In this digital age where information is collected just about everywhere from what types of products the user is browsing online, categories they're purchasing from, it's key to leverage that data the customer is giving you to communicate directly to them and show them information and products we know they are or would be interested in. Do you have an example of a client that's, or maybe not a client, or a company that has done that really well? Yes. Um, I would say a retailer that does this really well in terms of personalization is Best Buy. Um, I am I am a customer of Best Buy, and anytime I buy any tech gadget, so here's a great example. I bought a TV from them, and after I bought that TV, about a week later, I received an automated email that asked me, hey, hope you're enjoying your TV. Do you want to mount it? And then it uh, cross-promoted. Geek Squad to me to say, hey, do you want Geek Squad to come install a TV mount for you? Do you need a sound system? Uh, Anything Mm -hmm. else for your TV? (laughs) And that's great because it's all relevant to the purchase that I made versus, let's say, selling me now, you know, gaming entertainment that I'm, I personally (laughs) am not interested in. So it's perfect. (laughs) It's perfect to that specific item that I purchased. And then for you know, measuring results, what are the kinds of KPIs that are important to email management? Yeah. 
you know, it's so typical to think just like delivery rate, open rate, click rate, but the email key KPI that I like to use to measure success of an email program is RPE, which stands for revenue per email. It's calculated mm -hmm. by total revenue driven by the email channel divided by the total numbers of emails delivered. So if you're sending to a million users and getting less than one cent back, which I have seen with large retailers, that is a sign that it's time to revisit your sending strategy. It justifies that sending to more doesn't equate to more return or more revenue. And once my clients start segmenting and setting up customer journeys, they start to see the RPE of those campaigns increase by 50% or more. Damn. That's pretty, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Segmentation and personalization is the name of the game here. All right. All right. Um, so I know delivery rates, I've heard that talked about as it relates to email. Um, mm -hmm. What sorts of things affect delivery rates? Yeah, I would say opt-in collection, um, like I mentioned before, and user engagement. So if a user is consistently not opening or clicking your emails, let's say for six months since their, since their sign up date, then ISPs like Gmail, Yahoo, or Hotmail will recognize that. They'll see that this is a sign that the email subscriber is not interested in your emails and start sending your emails to spam. So be sure to look at engagement. If your open rates are less than 10%, or if your click-through rate is less than 1%, it's time to rethink who you're sending to and how often you're sending to them. So for those who aren't engaging, send to them once a week instead of every day, or give them options to tell you what type of emails they want from you so that you can send them relevant emails they're interested in and end up engaging with. So you've mentioned batching and blasting and how that isn't an ideal strategy. Uh, what other strategies do you think our listeners should implement to get the most out of their email program? Yeah, absolutely automated workflow or journey sends. So setting these up will help streamline your email marketing team and they have the highest engagement across any sense. So an example is a welcome series. So once a user signs up for your email program, you want to provide them a seamless onboarding experience that builds your brand value and gets them to convert. So think of it as your first impression. Um, so you set up a welcome series uh, to send to them, uh, send to them immediately after sign up so that it's timely. If you have a welcome offer, send a follow up three days later. Um, if they haven't made a purchase, reminding them that the offer is waiting. Then you can even add a third touch point, suggesting best-selling products, or even ask them what their interests are, so you can send them emails that are tailored to their interests and easily get personalization in your email marketing. Other automated series I recommend are Abandoned Cart, Abandoned Browse, Post Purchase, and Lapse Purchaser. And I would say the best part of these series is that once they're set up, they're automated and don't require any manual scheduling. So your team can focus on optimization and A-B testing. And I'm, I'm guessing that this um, varies a bit by what vertical you're working in for emails. So if you're working in B2B with a, a really long lead time, like six months to a year to, mm -hmm. to sell a product, I'm guessing that, um, you know, the welcome series looks very different than kind of the scenario you're describing with um, like a, a fast purchase retailer. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Think about, so I've worked with um, B2B clients and you can have a, a prospecting welcome series where let's say they just provided the email on site. But once they've filled out, let's say a quote form, you can have a quote follow up journey and have mm -hmm. that be personalized. So when I say welcome, it can definitely go into different aspects of a welcome journey and be separated out based on the different touch points from prospect to, to lead to customer and so forth. Very cool. Okay, so my next question comes comes with a huge, uh, a huge asterisk because I, I feel this is an SEO. Um, so for context, a lot of times we'll hear like, oh, SEO is dead. It's not going to be around anymore. It's not this, it's not that, um, that it's dated, you know, all of those sorts of things. As an SEO, I very much disagree. Um, 
I feel like email probably gets lumped into yeah. a similar boat, or at least that's kind of the, the gist, um, you know, with open rates and click through rates being low and all of those sorts of things, or just unsubscribing customers. Um, you know, we've talked a bit about like spam and, and junk and, and those sorts of things. What do you, what do you think about this? Like is, is email dead the same way SEO is dead? Yeah. So I think that's an easy misconception because if you think about like email, you think email has been around for <laughs> decades at this point. Like we think AOL dial up, you know, yeah. and you're like, how could this still be relevant? And I have to disagree. <laughs> I think there's so much that you can do with email and it's only improving. We mm -hmm. already have AI available. Uh, and it's really cool because AI, AI nowadays can help drive email content at the time of open. So we're saying based on your browser activity, based on your activity, um, even though it's past the send time, yeah. when you open that email, that gets updated to whatever you've been doing recently. That, that is so interesting. Effective. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And another example is Gmail's um, AMP, which stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, which allows users to interact dynamically with the content within that message itself without leaving their inbox to reduce friction. So an example is like if you are booking a hotel, you can select the city and dates of where you want to stay right in the email. And again, mm -hmm. that's to just reduce um, drops in sessions of going to the website itself. And again, because I think emails cost is so low, that's another reason I don't see it phasing out. Yeah. We've had some roadblocks recently with iOS 15 updates and mm -hmm. open tracking being inflated. But I think that that's just become an opportunity to challenge marketers to think about email engagement in a different way and readjust what the main KPIs we should be looking at are. That is a a great teaser to our next episode um, <laughs> where we're going to be talking all about those iOS changes and some strategies to combat that. Um, but to wrap up this episode, we want to leave our listeners who work in, you know, an individual channel or an oversight position across channels, some advice. So how could other channels be better working alongside email? Yeah, that's a great question. My advice is to look at the overarching customer journey and experience. Don't look at your channels individually. Create a journey that talks to them across multiple touch points based on their engagement. So use all the data points you have available to curate that journey and ensure that experience is consistent. So if they aren't opening or clicking in an email, retarget them with an ad or adjust their web experience to where they last left off. And lastly, test, test, and test again. <laughs> Testing is so important to understand what resonates best with your customers and what cohort or segment of customers um, so that your program can be ever evolving. Uh, what worked best today might not be the case a month from now. Very cool. Well, I think that's very sound advice, uh, not just for email, but just across channels in general. Uh, definitely like the, the testing yeah, idea. Absolutely. It's something uh, we always need to do more of. For sure. All right, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your knowledge and expertise on email marketing. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Of course. That brings us to the end of this episode of Digital Marketing Musings. If you have another idea for an episode for our 2022 season, we'd love to hear it. Just drop us a note at digitalmarketingmusings at merkalink.com. And please join us again in two weeks. Uh, we'll be talking more about recent privacy changes and the impacts they've had on email marketing, tracking, measurement, and strategy. Um, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and to rate and review us. It helps others find our show. And please be sure to tell a friend as well. This episode was produced by Merkel with sound and video editing by Megan Ekman. Our team includes copywriting by Melissa Riley, graphic design by Garrett Rubel, website support by Ted Lonzak, and social media and promotion by Jenna Astrop and Andrea Ratner. Until next time, I'm Andrew McCartney. And I'm Gaia Reed. Bye.